A while ago, I decided to move away from full stack React frameworks and use a client server setup. That is, separate the backend and the frontend, each being a standalone app. So here is the stack I ended up choosing. For the backend, I picked Hono, Ban, PostgreSQL, Zod, Prisma, TypeScript, and Better Auth. And for the frontend, I chose React, Vit, TypeScript and 10 stack router. Honestly, it's a blast working with these technologies and I don't regret the decision at all. However, the issue with this stack is the lack of server side rendering for SEO. I know, I should have thought about it before starting the project, but here we are. That said, I explored a couple of options before deciding on 10 stack start. The first option explored was Astro for the marketing side. I could fetch the data from the course platform's backend in the Astro site and then redirect people to the course platform single page application to get and consume the course. It's a valid option, but I don't want to create and maintain another app, even a small one. The second option was to use Tenstack Router's SSR mode. I tried it, but ran into issues trying to set it up and eventually dropped it. Also, if I go that route, why not simply migrate to Tenstack Start and use it without most of its backend features? For example, I can use the selective SSR feature that allows me to choose which routes to render on the server. And in the future, if I need more backend features, I can opt in instead of migrating when the application becomes more complex. As a result, I chose to migrate to Tenstack Start. In this video, I'll show you how the migration from a single page application that uses Tenstack Router to Tenstack Start looks like. And if you don't want to watch the whole video, you can browse the PR in your own time. Look who's here. Say hi to my longtime code reviewing assistant. I've been using CodeRabbit since 2023 on side projects and at work and it changed how I review code. And not by replacing code reviews but by making them faster, more efficient and more consistent. CodeRabbit is an AI code reviewer that automatically reviews your pull requests and provides context-aware feedback. That means you get actual useful feedback tailored to your code base, not generic slop. Even better, you can correct it when it gets stuff wrong and it learns from your feedback, avoiding the same mistakes in the future. So let's start with my favorite feature. CodeRabbit summarizes the changes introduced in the pull request, so no pull request is left with an empty description. And it goes even deeper with the world through section where you can see the changes categorized by the files that were updated. It also generates a visual representation of the interactions between the different parts of the code through the sequence diagrams. All of this combined makes it much easier and quicker to understand the PR's purpose. And the main feature, the code review. It detects the issue, categorizes it by severity, explains what the problem is, and then suggests changes. You can even commit the proposed change by clicking the button in the Committable Suggestion section. Lastly, it adds some nice touches like showing the estimated code review effort so you can get an idea about how long it will take to review the pull request. Whether you are a solo developer or working in a team, CodeRabbit brings insane value. Give it a try and you'll thank me. So let's start with the router configuration which looks like this before the migration. The code initializes a new React query client instance. It then sets up a router instance with a specific configuration, a default pending component that routes should use if no pending component is provided for those routes, a default not found component that works similarly to the default pending component, except that it's used when users try to visit a route that doesn't exist. Then we have a context object available in all routes that contains authentication details and the query client. It then registers things for type safety in the declare module section. It fetches the authentication state and inserts it into the router's context. And lastly, it mounts the application in the DOM, wrapping it with strict mode, query client provider and the router's context. The first change I made in the star migration was to rename the file from main.tsx 
to router.tsx. That's the recommended name in their docs, so I follow that. The code is similar to the Tenstack router code with a few exceptions. The first one is that it doesn't fetch the authentication state anymore. Also, we have the getRouter function which creates a query client for each request and set up router SSR query integration connects it with the router to handle SSR hydration and dehydration. And lastly, it doesn't mount the application in the DOM. Initially, I moved the authentication check to the root route, but I'll probably remove it from there too and only use it in the routes where it's needed. So the next file to modify was the root route of the application. The root route is the highest in the route tree and it encapsulates all the other routes as children. This is the code that sets up the root route with Tenstack Router before the migration. It defines a new router interface that describes the structure of the context object. It then creates the root route with the custom context and the root function as the component. It then continues by implementing the root component that defines the layout for the application. It wraps the app in the theme provider that allows users to switch between dark and light modes. It also sets the default theme to the user system preference. It then renders the navigation bar at the top of the app and it also renders the outline component inside the main content area of the app. The outlet component renders the child routes. Then it renders the footer at the bottom of the application and lastly it renders the toaster component to display those notifications and the 10 stack router dev tools. In summary, it configures the root route with a custom context, team management, and the Tenstack dev tools. So, migrating the root route to Tenstack start didn't require too many changes. The key differences are as follows. There is now a fetch auth server function that fetches the session data. The before load function calls this fetch auth server function to get the session data. However, we are not using it in this example but if you want to use it, you can use it via the use route context hook. You can then pass that session data to the child routes. It also includes a meta that contains a link to the main CSS file and meta tags for SEO. I likely remove the auth related code from the root route and fetch session data in the relevant routes that require it. However, I left it in the code as an example of how you can use auth in server functions. Now let's look at the vid changes. Here is how the vid configuration looks for the single page application using Tenstack Router. It uses a couple of plugins such as the Tenstack Router vid which integrates Tenstack Router with vid and allows you to do things such as using file based routing. Please note that the Tenstack Router vid is now deprecated and you should use the Tenstack Router instead. Since my code is older, it uses the deprecated method. We also have the visualizer which generates an HTML file with the bundle size and dependencies, helping you to optimize your builds. We also have the React plugin which enables React Fast Refresh and JSX slash TSX support among others. And lastly, we have the Tailwind CSS which integrates Tailwind CSS with Vit. The vid file also contains two pet aliases and a proxy for the server API requests. The server proxy is used in dev mode and it forwards all the requests made to the client for the API pet to the server. The migration to 10 stack start require replacing a couple of plugins and removing the server proxying. However, the migration required other changes with better auth, the auth framework and Hono the server framework. The auth client now requires you to specify the base URL of your auth server. In my case, better auth integrates with Hono, so my base URL is the server URL. Lastly, the Hono RPC stopped working for some reason. The solution is to compile the code before using it, include the credentials and send the cookies to the server. And yes, the hard-coded URLs need replacing with proper environment variables. And lastly, I had to use an adaptation of the theme provider to make the light and dark modes work. It's an adaptation from the next theme's repository. After the migration, the application runs smoothly as a 10 stack start application. But there are some things left to do. The first one is to move the auth fetching from the root route in the routes where it's needed and to replace the hard coded values with environment variables. That's all. Thanks for watching the video and I hope it helped you.